G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. And yes, it's true, Nikon screwed autofocus. And if you've only been in photography for less than 10 years, you're probably not aware of how cameras used to work. So today I wanna to talk about expectations around legacy glass. And I wanna take you on a bit of a journey through lenses, adapted lenses, and specifically address some of the user comments uh, in my feed who talk about why the F to Z adapter does not support screw driven lens focusing. I wanna talk about realities, I wanna talk about the industry, so we can all just understand the journey because manufacturing, maintaining legacy, supporting the old, bringing in the new, updating, making things better, faster, silent, lighter, all that stuff. At some point, the gains that we make in one area is going to cause losses in another. So I suppose if we are to accept and embrace and reap the benefits of advancements in technology, then we have to accept at some point some degree of losses. So let's quickly start with how did Nikon screw autofocus? This is my trusty Nikon D4. This is an absolute legend of a camera. It does stuff like this. That's what it's built for. And the reason I bought this sort of camera, this was the best camera. It had the best sensor, it had the most resolution. Then around the time this camera came out, the D800 came out, and there was a divergence between high speed bulletproof and high megapixel, but slower. Thus we have the D5 and the incoming D6, the D500 in the high speed camp, and we have the D800, the D810, the D850 in the high megapixel camps. Back to how Nikon screwed or autofocus, this is how they did it. If you look there, there is a tiny little screwing thing, and that drives this spot on the lens. There it is. And it sounds like this. Noisy. Noisy beast. And we can even see it turning. It actually focuses externally, which is interesting. This is how things used to happen. You could see. And at the time that I bought this, I think in 1997, I got it with my F5, so a film camera. It was a very useful lens for me as I was doing mostly streetscape photography. The f-stops didn't matter and it gave me a wide range in one lens. And back in those days, I could only afford about two lenses. The F5 almost made me go broke. This lens is called specifically the 24-120 3.5-5.6D AFD lens. It's screw driven. Light comes through the lens, camera finds focus, it sends the message to the lens via turning that thing and acquiring focus. That is how Nikon screwed autofocus. In 1998, Nikon released the first AFS lens. And what that meant was electronically, instead of the motor being in the body, so this camera can do both. It has a motor in the body and it has the capacity to send electricity to the lens for the motor in the lens to focus the lens. So that's how it worked with AFS lenses on it. First one being in 1998, which is 22 years ago. Six years earlier in 1992, Nikon released the AFI lenses, which were also run electronically. But there was a very limited range of lenses released, and these were largely only high-end telephoto lenses. This is where the story starts. We start getting more and more electronic lenses being released. Obviously, there's still the older type lenses around, which means the bodies 
need to continue to have a motor within them in order to be able to auto focus those lenses. Now there was the odd body, I think the Nikon D40 was one of them, where there was no focus motor in the body and you could only buy AFS lenses and above, electronically focus driven lenses. Thus, Nikon knowing they had millions and millions of old screw driven lenses out there, they continued to put the screw driving motors in the bodies, in the majority of bodies, up until this very day. They're still there. 2011 slash 12, when I picked up this little beastie here, and this is the Nikon V1. Now, people talk a lot about Nikon being late to mirrorless. They weren't, they were just late to full frame mirrorless. I'm not even sure they were late, they just arrived at a later time because they had a very successful DSLR business. So late is relative to when you think the party has started, don't you think? You can't be late to a party if the party hasn't started yet. Anyway, that's a conversation for another day. But I bought this at the start of 2012, I think it was announced in 2011, and this is Nikon's first mirrorless camera, the V1. And you can see the absolutely tiny little sensor in there. What made me interested in buying one, because normally I wouldn't even think about this sort of stuff, was this thing here. And this was an F to one adapter. Nikon had made an adapter to go from this tiny sensor, tiny, tiny, tiny sensor, and use full frame lenses. So here we are. And of course, the V1 came with its own native lenses. We'll, we'll fire it up, because this thing still works. I loved it. And it shot video. And there we are, it's a raw file. Let's take the shot. Now this thing had no IBIS. So if I had a VR lens on here, you know, I don't even know if that would, what that would do. If this thing supports VR. Now, also, the other thing that was crazy, 2011 is we can shoot video. We can shoot video. So let's shoot some video. It's pretty low light, but we are shooting 1080p, 30 frames per second. There's no IBIS, so it's going to be not super smooth. So here we are shooting inside. It's pretty low light, but we are shooting 1080p, 30 frames per second. There's no IBIS. I so it's going to be not super smooth. And this is a 24mm lens, and I tell you, I reckon it's more like a 70mm lens. This is how cropped this tiny sensor is. My reason for showing you this, though, is in 2011, Nikon showed us that they could make an adapter which didn't have a screwdriver in it that would very successfully run an AFS lens, all of its autofocus, all of its electronics, with a tiny, tiny little body like this. I mean, just have a look how small. And so I can couple any Nikon lens with this adapter onto here, and it'll work. And I can couple any AFS lens and above, and it will do everything an AFS lens normally does. And that is spectacular from my perspective. But in 2011, they were showing us what the future would look like. Then something very exciting and very interesting happened in the camera world. Sony came to the mirrorless market. And in late 2012, early 2013, so about a year and a half after Nikon's mirrorless foray, they brought out a full frame mirrorless camera. And this is the a7R. This is one of the original cameras that came out. I could see all the be benefits of mirrorless. Here they were, there were lots of them. Look at the size. We've gotten rid of the mirror box. We have the capacity to do things silently. And it really changed my capacity. And the idea and the thought of having a camera, which was just smaller and more flexible, although it was so scary having the sensor that close. And Sony did an amazing thing. They did this. It is another adapter made by Metabones. This adapter came for free with my A7R. And you could choose to make that adapter Nikon or Canon. 
because Sony knew on launch, they only had about four lenses, just like Canon and Nikon did just a year and a half ago. So adapters were par for the course. And this meant we could do this. That is a Nikon F lens on a Sony E mount with an adapter. Now that was very exciting and I thought, oh yeah, that's interesting. But this adapter did not allow for focus and metadata and aperture. So very quickly, it showed it had its limitations and it meant that the transition to Sony was not as smooth as I wanted it to be. I could use my tilt shift lenses because they were fully manual and that experience was normal. And then older lenses which had, like this one, an aperture ring and manual focus capabilities were usable. But it was a compromised experience. We could see the cross pollinization of lenses and camera brands was occurring. And we could see that, well, Nikon had shown us that you could have AFS and metadata and all those things. And obviously the engineering had just simply not been done yet with the Metabones. What happened next? Nikon announced coming up almost on two years ago in mid 2018 that the Z cameras were coming and that they were going to come with an adapter. Now, you can watch my video up here where people thought it was gonna be a massive adapter and it would have to have a prism in it for autofocus and there'd be all this crazy stuff. And I came out and I said, well, th they've done this and this was focus on the sensor. So why, why would they need to come out with anything different than the adapter, than this style of adapter? Why would they have to come out with anything different? That, that was exactly right. The, the adapters are very similar. Look at them. It's very similar sizes, very similar shapes, very similar feet, very similar arrangement. And thus, what they had trialed in 2011, 2012, with this, the FT1 adapter, six or seven years later, we got the F to Z adapter, which behaved exactly the same way. With older lenses, you could mount them, you could use them manually, excellent, all that stuff works fine. They, the lenses still work great, they sure do. They just don't autofocus. And they did exactly the same thing. They'd shown us the writing was on the wall in 2011. And here we were in 2018 doing the same thing. So then the F to Z did an amazing thing. It allowed us with this massive new mount. Let me just take the Nikon lens off the Sony. It's, this starts to get quite confusing how we can cross pollinate so much. Let me whack that on there. And there we have it. The F to Z adapter and the F on the Z camera. And this lens, we get 100% functionality. We get a lens that performs exactly how we think it should. The Nikon 24-270, the original non-VR version, shooting at one eighth of a second, and that's looking pretty sharp. Of course, we're focusing on the screen, which is not sharp, it's only a 1080p screen. If we look over here, we can see that that's quite sharp. So that Nikon lens, it's over 10 years old, working very nicely on the Nikon Z with the F to Z adapter. It's great. This is the original version of the 24 to 70 2.8 no VR. Now I've got stabilization. It's an advancement from my perspective and any lens from the last 22 years, if it was an AFS one that you purchased, you will get full functionality on your Z camera. And then just to go one step further, because this is a bit of a hybrid conversation about adapters and what that means and what Nikon's doing. And this whole thing goes one step further with an adapter like this the Sony E mount to Z mount. Now this is only if you're into this sort of stuff or if you have a large collection of cameras and bodies and lenses, then you have opportunity. Some people are, will just stick in one ecosystem, one set of lenses and do one thing their whole life. And that is completely cool. The first thing we will do is mount this, click. There it is. I've got so many lenses here. We're gonna get the Sony 24 to 105, similar to that lens down there, the 24 to 120 from Nikon 20 years ago. And we're gonna mount this puppy. And we're on and we're live. And focus was snappy. This is on the Z7, by the way, just so you know what's going on here. 
So as we can see here, it's a 24 to 105 F4. That information comes through. I don't own a Nikon version of that. A Nikon Z version of that does not exist. There we have, we're shooting on the Nikon Z7. And here is the image shot at 1 30th of a second at F4 at 105. So full stretch. And if we go into 100%, I reckon that's looking pretty good. Now, as you know, I'm gonna do a, a larger scale test. It's not a test about which lens is better, like whether a Sony lens or a Nikon lens is better. That's not why I wanna do it. I just wanna show how well does it work? How fast is focus? Is everything normal? Like is the focus the same on the Sony for this Sony lens as it is on the Nikon? Does the coupling and the metadata and all that stuff come across? That's what I wanna talk about. But to go back to Nikon screwed autofocus, yeah, it's absolutely true. Nikon have screwed autofocus when it comes to autofocus with the AFD lenses and older. That's true, they have screwed it. And because they've screwed it, and because this adapter here does not have screw capabilities, it does not have a screwdriver in it, there is nothing there. Whereas on this camera, we can see it. It's totally true, those lenses, are manual. You have to focus an older lens manually. You know, I'm a pretty practical person. I've run my own business for 30 years and what you've got to do when you're in business because nothing ever goes really the way you expect it. There's always highs and lows. And my approach to running business is pretty much my approach to acquisitions and equipment. And as I'm a photographer, cameras have been a very big part of my life. And at the end of the day, I try to do what is most practical, taking into account the future and the advancement of future technology and my investment in the past. And I put those two things together and try and come up with an outcome that works. Now, in regards to AFD and older lenses, well, you know, they are old, 20 odd years old. And the reality is, as we found out today, you can use them quite effectively and you do get some advantages. And they include things like in-body stabilization, stabilization, which you may never have had before, essentially live view of how the lens is working. And in the case of the 24 to 120 sitting on the Z, it worked extremely well. I found uh, being able to focus with it perfectly fine with focus peaking and it worked in video too. Focus peaking coming up and that screen should be in focus. And we've got in-body stabilization. I'm shaking that. And that is doing a great job. The 24 to 120, 3.5 to 5.6, the old AFD lens. If we go into 100%, we can see it doesn't handle flare as well because it's such an old lens. And I'm not sure if we're getting stabilization or not. But this was shot at 1 30th of a second at f5. That's the best you can get when you zoom to 38 mil. This gives us an idea and this shows us all of these lenses working. And of course, this lens has been focused manually. So if we look in here at 100%, I was focusing on the screen. Let's just bring this up a little bit so we can see this here and uh, yeah i think the focus is pretty good it's just low contrast situation right now what i see here is nikon has created the capacity for us to be able to or to, for our gear to be able to stretch a long way into the future the afd lenses are not useless they're just not quite as useful now you've got a new system and i suppose i would say look if you're desperate to keep running those lenses and get a lot of the advantages of a mirrorless camera, well, we're very lucky to have seen the D780, which is a native F mount and gives you all of the F mount advantages, but they also say it's basically a Z6. So it's about practical decisions. The glass that you have, if it's AFD or older, well, you invested in it a long time ago and that investment presumably has been amortized. There's an opportunity there. My glass is half full. I can still use those lenses. I can still get great outcomes out of them. They're actually fantastic for making films because you can manually focus them. So when thinking about AFD lenses and the fact that Nikon screwed autofocus is something that you can't do on a Z, but there are many things you can do with a Z. And lenses newer, A, 
F, S, and newer than that work perfectly. I have had no problems with them at all. Not everybody feels the same, but again, as always, it comes down to our use case. So I can see a video coming on using this lens here, the 24 to 120 with the Z, just for fun. And I've got the video coming up very soon with the Sony E to Z adapter. And as I said at the start of this film, we're embracing the technology that is being given to us by the Z. There are advancements there. There are size and weight gains in regards to them being smaller and lighter. And ultimately, we can't live in a world where we continue to get our cake and eat it all the time. There has to be a trade-off somewhere. And if it is glass that's almost 25 years older and more, well, that's a generation. I don't think that's the end of the world. And I do think there's a possibility, considering that there are millions of Nikon lenses out there in the wild, that a third party will try and come up with an adapter that allows for the screw-driven autofocus lenses. That is possible. Who knows? So to sum all of this up, yes, Nikon screwed autofocus. And that screwed autofocus is not a modern system, does not work with the Z system. So they screwed it. They did screw it. But we've had 20 years plus to solve the problem. And I think that's okay. I think that's acceptable. Plus, they're still completely usable. You just don't get autofocus. In my glass half full world, as a good result, I'm happy. I hope you can be too. Love to know your stories. Love to hear about adapters. Love to hear about what you think about cross-pollinization. Personally, I think it's fun. I enjoy it. And I've experimented with it from as far back as the V1, then with the Sony, putting on Nikon lenses back in 2013. And then of course, we've got the Z with the F lenses. And then finally, we have Sony lenses with the Z. Love to know your thoughts on all of that. More coming soon as usual. So good to see you and look, and if this is your first time here, it's so good to see you. And if you'd like to see more of me, please subscribe, please share, it makes us all smarter. Please like, because it helps get the word out there. Please comment, love to hear what you have to say. If you click on the Meadow and Photography down here, you can watch over 150 videos right now. Come visit me in my Melbourne City store. We would love to see you and join Focus Group. That'd be fun. All right. That's a cracker, isn't it? Whoa. Better pack all this stuff up. It's a bit of a mess. All right. Everything's back to normal. <laughs>